a all-terrain tire review for the Explorers. I purchased some tires and they've come in, so I'm on my way to the shop now to pick them up, uh, which is perfect timing because today is Monday, it's raining like crazy, but come Wednesday, they're saying we're going to be getting snow in New York. So winter's coming, so I need these tires. So just perfect timing. You know, we're going to be um, reviewing the Pirelli Scorpion All-Terrain Plus. Also going to be reviewing the uh, Fuel Grippers and of course uh, the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. We're going to be comparing them all. We're going to do a little comparison and um, just tally up some points uh, for all, uh, a couple of some, you know, aspects of tires, all-terrain tires that I look for. And we're going to total up the score and see who wins. I pretty much know who wins. Um, but I figure it would be a nice, fun video to make. All right, so stick around for the altering tire review video. All right, if you haven't already, please remember to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I come out with the next video. All right, and also, um, looks like we're up to 81 subscribers. That's what's up. Uh, that means we got 19 more subscribers to go before I do the giveaway. Uh, we're doing that giveaway at 100 subscribers. Uh, I got a little something something planned for that. I'm um, going to give away an emblem of your choice. So whichever uh, subscriber is selected after we reach 100 will get an emblem of your choice. Before I forget in regards to uh, the merch that I'm adding to the channel through the Teespring account. Um, just still waiting for um, what I ordered to come in the mail. I'm not trying to sell you guys something that I haven't touched, something that I don't like. So I went ahead and uh, I purchased one and I'm waiting for it to come in the mail. As soon as it comes in the mail, I just want to touch it. I want to see how it feels and looks. Then I'll go ahead and uh, provide the Teespring link down below. I want to remind you guys that these are conditions that I use uh, this tire and not necessarily the normal categories that uh, companies or someone doing any type of reviews would be doing the, uh, the categories for, but this is just uh, real world conditions that I use my tires in. All right, so let me explain how this is gonna work. Uh, I'm going to be comparing these three tires uh, based on uh, six categories. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, it's wet traction, dry traction, uh, how it performs in the snow, on the sand, its wear pattern, and um, the noise, or how noisy it is. It's gonna be a, a 10 point must system in, uh, in, uh, in each category. And uh, so basically, no tire can get no more than 60 points. All right, so those are the six categories we're gonna be comparing these tires up uh, against one another. Man, I'm so thankful that the, um, the rain has stopped and the sun came out. So you know what that means, right? One more way to the car wash. Bullet is filthy. Uh, be the first wash with the new tires. So I'm gonna get some nice armor all on it. All right, so let us first um, start talking about the Pirelli. Uh, the tire is the Pirelli Scorpion All-Terrain Plus. Uh, this tire, absolutely love this tire. This was my absolute favorite tire. Uh, I, I purchased this tire in a previous vehicle and just absolutely fell in love with it. So when I got the Explorer for me, it was a no-brainer to, uh, to get this tire. But I quickly noticed... Um, somewhat of an issue that's not not going to get graded in this video uh, that issue was the size the, the Explorer comes with 255 50 20 unfortunately Pirelli does not make the all-terrain plus in that for that size the smallest 20 at the time was uh, 275 55 20 I thought nothing of it so you know against the, the better judgment of uh, my tire guy. You know, I basically had to have that tire, so I, I needed that size. 
Uh, and unfortunately, the problem that I ran into was that the Explorers, they don't fit that size tire so well without rubbing. It rubbed like crazy. Um, so that meant that I had to cut a whole lot of stuff. Now, there is another video that I made. I believe it's the lifted video uh, with the Explorer, which I uh, detailed what specifically uh, needed to be cut to fit that tire size. So I'll go ahead and link that above uh, for that video so you can watch that video so you can see what needed to be cut. So basically, I had to cut a lot of stuff in order for it not to rub as much because it still rubbed, but only when I would um, turn all the way to the left. But after that was resolved, got the spacers and did the cuts, it was Gucci. Um, so that's the thing with the tire size. But the tire in general, man, let's start talking about this tire. I absolutely loved this tire. Um, let's talk about the dry traction first. Superb. I mean, perfect. And uh, the it's dry traction. You know, the, I, I believe this was a soft compound tire, so you know it's kind of sticky for an all-terrain tire. Um, but it was great, man. The grip was excellent. <laughs> so that definitely gets a ten from me and for its uh, its dry traction. The wet traction, it was good. It was very good, actually. Um, but I, I had to give it a nine. And the reason why I had to give it a nine is because. I don't know what it was, maybe because of how wide the tire was, but whenever I was driving through standing water at speeds, man, oh man, the car would pull towards the, the, the towards whichever puddle I'm going in, like if, the, if it's on my left side, when I go through that puddle real quick, it would pull, lose traction at that moment and pull to that. So I had to seriously consider that when I was on the highway or any, like for instance, the Belt Parkway, you know, the Belt Parkway, when it rains, it floods in certain areas. Sometimes certain areas just develop a puddle. I couldn't really go through it um, without getting pulled into the puddle fully. Didn't have that problem with the same tire on my previous vehicle, which was a Honda CRV, which had a much, um, not, not as wide of a tire. It was like 225 was the widest. Yeah, it was 225. These are 275, I think that's happening because of how wide it is um so for the wet traction unfortunately um i have to give it a nine um but any in any other wet conditions it was it was good it was excellent but except that one little hiccup now on the sand this thing was a beast man these tires those tires were a beast you know absolutely um no complaints no issues no problems getting myself out both with this vehicle and the previous vehicle um, but I'm trying to keep this review specific to the Explorer uh, so I had no issues on the sand it was perfect man oh excellent in fact it was the first tire that I drove in the sand with this Explorer which I believe I did a video with doing that I might link that one as well while we're at it um, so it gets a it gets a 10 for driving in, in the sand uh, driving in the snow, again, I had absolutely no issues at all. It was perfect. You know, I didn't have any issues with, with braking and, and, and um, slipping while braking or sliding while braking versus the stock tires that they sent with this thing. Oh my God, it was a nightmare for me trying to brake in the snow. Slip, slipping and sliding like crazy. But with the Pirelli All-Terrain, Scorpion All-Terrain Plus, no issues there. So for the snow, it's going to get a 10 for me. So let's now talk about how this tire wears. Not necessarily the pattern, but this was a relatively soft compound tire and it, it wore pretty fast. I mean, I kind of knew that. Um, so, you know, it's not like I discovered an issue with that. I knew that it was going to wear kind of fast. Um, so for the wear, I think we're going to give it a nine. I'm not going to do half points, so I'll give it a 9. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe I only got about 30,000 miles. No more than 40,000 miles. Maybe it was 40 if I check. Out of this tire, which is generally what I get out of all of my tires, except one. <laughs> um, so for the wear, you know, I'm giving it a 9. 
All right, now the next category, which is, um, I don't particularly care about how noisy or quiet a tire is. It's just worth noting, because I know a lot of people consider that in the tire. I mean, the tire, yes, it did have a hum. I actually liked the hum. It, I didn't mind it, you know? It, it kind of gave or added to the presence of the lift. You know, you, you see the Explorer, oh wow, it's lifted. Oh, he's got all-terrain tires and okay, it's got a hum. Some people really like that. Some people really don't like that. I'm really in the middle. I, don't, I could care less if it has it or not. But I'm just noting that this tire did not have, uh, that this tire did have hum. All right, so let's do a tally of what the uh, Pirelli All-Terrain Plus received. Let's move right along <laughs> to uh, talking about met the car wash. Had to tell him no brush. Don't put, don't let these guys put a brush on your paint, man. That's just like you might as well just go ahead and take sandpaper and rub it down yourself. But anyway. Let's move right along and uh, let's talk about the fuel gripper all-terrain tire. Uh, you know, I, I basically got that tire just to try it out. You know, I wanted to try an alternative. I, I, I couldn't go back to the Pirelli um, due to the size. I didn't want that look anymore. The tire spoke out a bit more than I wanted it to. And I kind of wanted to do something that was a little more mild, that looked a little bit more normal and of course you know I, I didn't want it to rub so my tire guy came up with um he suggested the fuels they're 265 50 20. uh so we went ahead with that um you know when it when it came to me the appearance wise it didn't look much different it was had a nice aggressive tread pattern basically we were just trying it out and i was like you know what i want to try it so I did, and um, I'm very happy with it overall. So let's go through and start grading this time. First, dry traction. It was good, it was really good. Hope you guys are not getting tripped out. So, dry traction was pretty good, except I don't know if maybe I was just discovering the, the limits of the tire, but it, it seemed like when I was, um, you know, taking a, a, a turn at speeds, at pretty much high speeds, it would, um, it would, it would start to feel glazed. That's the only word I could come up with. Like the tires wouldn't screech, but it would. It would really give me this feeling I'm like I'm understeering and oversteering somewhat. Like if I was in a turn at high speeds, I would start I would start to feel like I was sliding just a little bit. And then there was another time when I don't know man, it, like you know how like motorcycles can high side? Like the, the tires would grip and then toss them. Like I almost felt like it did that a couple of times and I had to come off the throttle to kind of regain balance. So, you know, other than that, it was it was great. It was good with, with uh, the dry traction. So for that, I'm giving this tire a nine for its um, dry traction. Now, it's wet traction pretty much did the same as the Pirelli. It was good um, in the wet, but it did the same exact thing that the Pirelli did in the puddle, which was pulling over to the left or to the right. Whichever whichever side of the puddle I was driving through would pull me to the center of it. Very uneasy, unsettling feeling. So for its dry or wet traction, I'm giving it a nine. All right, now on the sand, Basically flawless, same as the Pirelli, you know, had no issues on the sand, man. It was very good in the sand. Uh, so for the sand, it's gonna get a 10. All right. 
So for it, in the snow now, uh, pretty much the same as the Pirelli. Absolutely no issues. Had no issues getting in and out. So it's getting a ten for its uh, its its traction in the snow. Um, wear you know I got the same amount of wear 30 to 40 thousand miles um, so it's getting a 10 no problems with how it wore so in the last category uh, which is road noise uh, yes there was hum so you know again it's not really something that I care about uh, both the Pirelli got a 9 and so is this one getting a 9 just because there is hum no other reason other than that okay so why don't we do the tally for the fuel gripper tire and for the last tire um, which is the, the Nito Ridge Grappler this tire is going to be my new favorite tire <laughs> Sorry, Pirelli. Uh, man, this tire performed almost flawlessly. In fact, it seems like everything uh, that all the other tires uh, got a 9 in, this one pretty much got a 10 in, uh, which I'll, I'll go through that. But let's start with talking about its dry traction. Unlike the fuel gripper tire, and just like the Pirelli All Terrain Plus, man, this tire is flawless in the dry, man. I am so amazed at the grip. In fact, I think it has the most grip because, you know, as a rule, um, as the tire wears, um, your dry traction increases and your wet traction decreases, right? Yes, that is the case with this tire as well, but it, it, it would, I still had significantly more grip um, in each category over the others. Well, in the two categories, in the dry and the wet. Um, so its dry traction was excellent, man. It was, I, I have no complaints, so it gets a 10. It's uh, wet traction now. Um, I'm still giving it a 10, and I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, the wet traction in standing water or puddles, it was better than the Pirelli and the fuel tire. I mean, it, it still, I had a sudden break of, of traction, but it didn't really make me pull or sway into it. I mean, I, I felt, you know, the difference between wet surface and going through standing water or puddles but it didn't give me that pulling that the other tires did mind you same size except the Pirelli but so for that it's it's getting a 10 in the wet all right in the snow you know still no issues man I, I didn't have any issues um with sliding after braking or you know getting out of any type of situations so it's getting a 10 for the snow traction. Um, on the sand, man, this thing was even better than the both of the Pirelli and the fuel. And I'll, I'll explain why. I believe that is because uh, this tire has a really aggressive tread padding, um, both on, the, on the, 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 the main tread and on the sidewall. The sidewall. The tread on the sidewall is uh, is pretty aggressive, and you know I, I air down every time when I'm in, driving on the sand. And when you air down, your tire spreads out, so you know the sidewall tends to contact the ruts a lot more when you air down. And having an, an aggressive tread on the sidewall aids in traction, more traction in the sand. And this. This tire, you know, did that excellent. And even in in the snow, it's the same principle, except you're not airing down. But, you know, when you're traveling through deep snow, the sidewall is giving you, you know, if it has an aggressive tread on the sidewall, you know, that, that's a little extra traction. You know, I'll, I'll post up a photo I took after I went through a storm once and I was 
pretty impressed with how it looked, how the tire looked. You can clearly see where, you know, the tire was cupping or gripping through the snow because it kind of like had snow pocketed up. So for the snow, it gets a 10. And the sand. All right, now where? I, I can't understand. I need to look up the compound of this tire. I mean, it's a relatively soft compound, but this this tire wears like no tire I've had. I am gonna look up the mileage, but I've had this tire longer than I've had the other three. And the wear pattern, you know, it wore pretty evenly. And, um, I, I basically still had very good traction even as as low as the tread was with, on this tire I, I still had very good traction even in the rain slightly less of course because you know the tires wear you get less wet traction by design you know the tread wear the tread design on tires are wider at the base versus at the top you know that's why when you get a new tire look at it, it doesn't look as wide it is as it looks when you are wearing it down and that's the reason why your dry traction tends to increase as the tire wear so you know I was even as low as the track was I was very impressed with the, the amount of traction that I was still getting so for the wear it gets a 10 definitely a 10 This tire is so quiet. There is no hum. This is the most aggressive tread pattern I've had yet. Yet it's the quietest tire in comparison. Nito, how did you do that? Please explain it to me. <laughs> you know, this tire is quiet, man. So for the noise, it definitely gets a 10. You know, I can't say enough about this tire. I'm really, really stoked about this tire. Nito has definitely gained <laughs> a new customer, especially for the all-terrain tire segment. I mean, I've never had any other type of um, Nito tire, but if I were to, um, you know, to change up my setup and lower bullet, uh, then I'll be get interested in a, in a high-performance tire. And, you know, as always, uh, Pirelli will be my first choice. But I'll, I now have another uh, consideration to strongly consider. Um, followed by probably the BFG for a performance tire. For as long as I'm lifted, Bullet will definitely have the Nito Ridge Grapplers. All right, so let's do the tally uh, for the Nito Ridge Grapplers, which I am... I believe that's going to be 60s. I don't think I gave it a 9 on anything. The tire is just that good to me. So, that's what I'm going with for altering tires. But just a quick reminder uh, that I will have some merch coming to the channel. And uh, I will be setting up a Patreon uh, account. Just so that um, if any of you would like to support the channel... Uh, monetarily or you know if you want to purchase some merch to you know to purchase the channel and also if you like it you'll do you can do that through the teespring account um you know i pretty much already have that set up but i'm waiting for um my order to come in you know i'm not going to try and sell you guys something that i you know that i haven't touched or don't like so i'm waiting on my uh my sweater i ordered a hoodie uh to come in i want to touch it i want to see it. i want to where see how I feel about it before I start pushing it and uh, trying to get you guys to uh, to purchase one. All right, so just look out for the Patreon link and also the Teespring link. Well, that wraps up this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, watching this video uh, has helped you make a, a decision upon uh, which tire you want to get for your Explorer. I know that this uh, might be something that a lot of you might be interested in. So that's why another reason why I decided to do this video. All right. So please remember to um, smash that like button, y'all. Uh, 
hit that subscribe and uh, the, the notification bell so you're notified when I come out with the next video. Um, the next video that I'm planning to do is, um, well, if it goes well, uh, I'm waiting, I'm still waiting on the Steeda rear sway bar to come in the mail. It's the only thing that hasn't come in yet. I have the Moog uh, front and rear sway bar links. I didn't really want to separate the, the sway bar and uh, the link video because I have to work in the same area. It's like doing double work. But um, we'll, we'll see. If, if it doesn't come in within the next couple of days, then I'll just go ahead and make a sway bar link, Moog sway bar link video, followed by the Steeda rear sway bar uh, video. All right, so if you have any suggestions, of uh, videos you would like me to make, leave that in the comments below. Nice GT350. <laughs> uh, leave that in the comments below. I will definitely make whatever it is that you suggest as long as I can. So, uh, you know, I would love to hear from you guys. If you need your questions, comments, concerns, put that information in the comments below. Remember to have a blessed day and peace out.